We recently stayed at Resorts World, and here's what I think of it. With that new Resorts smell still in the air, it's a pretty impressive place. It's really three hotels in one. With the Hilton occupying the lowest tier, the Conrad in the middle, and its premier Crockfords making up the prestige part of these hotel rooms. The hotel is considered on the northern end of the Strip, not quite as north as the Stratosphere, which anchors that end, but it's a bit of a walk to its neighbours, the Wynn and Encore. There's also Circus Circus, but that's a resort I generally stay away from, so not really worth mentioning. Now, once the Fountain Blow opens, Resorts World will be well positioned, as this resort is going to be huge and relatively close by. <laughs> We originally booked a room at the Hilton property there, directly from their site. Pricing was reasonable at the time, staying two nights on a weekend, approximately $130 a night. As we got closer to the trip, I checked back and found that the Conrad property was now priced comparable. So a tip, especially for booking direct, is to keep checking back after booking to see if prices drop. So it's well worth taking a few minutes every week to do a quick check. Because this hotel is Hilton branded, with all three hotels under the same Hilton umbrella, if you have any status with that brand, you'll get those perks here also. For us, our status included free breakfast every morning, which meant no lining up at Starbucks. We Ubered here and were first impressed with the front lobby, which was done up in bright white tones, clean lines, with tasteful art and statues centrally located. One felt the status of a four to five star lobby. We found that we were dropped off at the Hilton entrance, so had to make our way to the Conrad check-in, as each sub-hotel had their own. The Conrad lobby felt even a touch more upscale, but all shared a similar style. Check-in was a simple affair with no surprises, but no upgraded rooms were offered. Our mistake may have been to book a strip view room, leaving any upgrade options limited other than suites, which our status did not include. Fast forward a few hours, we had a walk around and loved the openness of this resort. The choice of restaurants seemed endless. The food hall was worth the visit, probably topping all of them on the strip. Asian inspired choices for the most part and pricey, but filled with choices I had not seen before. The centerpiece in the walking area is this huge bowl covered in a display technology, using a mirror-like quality to the images so you could see your reflection while taking in a mini light show. The casino was well laid out, put right in the middle of the property, making it easy to navigate its perimeter. Everything was bright and airy with nice high ceilings. I tend to prefer casinos with coves and corners, but I applaud the style here, which no other casino compares. Although this is still a smoking permitted establishment, but probably due to its newness, there was no noticeable smokiness. I'd seen the various rooms at this property before we got here and was not let down. The Conrad rooms offer a slightly larger footprint over the Hilton ones. Nothing that would require one to upgrade to the Conrad though. The front hallway felt a bit wider and the color schemes are a bit different, but the overall style are the same. Added bonuses, which we thought might be here, robes, larger seating areas, larger bathrooms, were either missing or no different than the entry level property. It's possible these rooms might offer better tower locations for strip views, and we definitely had a good one, about 30 floors up, overlooking the pool complex, which also points to the strip direction, so no complaints there. And with floor to ceiling windows, these rooms offered the same expansive views as the Encore that we'd next stay at. We'll start with the room tour coming from the front door. Big mirror as you enter. I'll start from right to left. On the right hand side, you're gonna have the big TV, which is probably 65 inches. Some nice lighting. And artwork. Some comfortable seating, what well, looks comfortable. And then the bedroom area. 
Made up of one gargantuan king size bed with some artwork on the wall. Nice mood lighting. I love the mood lighting. They should do it under the bed, but I don't think they do. Nice seating area at the end of the bed, which actually looks very comfortable as well. I did notice that they've got USB ports built into the headboard. And it looks like it's USB-C and the original, which is nice. And it's like a charging port on top of the clock radio. And as we come around, back to the front, some shelving, open shelving, all the mini bar snacks that are pricey, including probably the $25 Fiji water. The mini bar, and I believe they have an area here for an area that we can put our stuff in, which is nice, without tripping any $20 drinks. And then lastly, the bathroom was similar to the rest of the property. Bright white marble everywhere, a huge walk-in shower with regular and rainfall head for those who want choice when cleaning up, and finishing off with a long integrated bench, making it easier for one to shave one's legs or to just sit and contemplate your losses downstairs. You've got mood lighting for the towels. So you don't have to keep bathroom light on all night if you want a night light. And then you've got a separate area for the toilet, glassed in the artwork. And one thing I noticed they don't have here, which I don't think there's any need for, is a telephone in here. I know some of the hotels have that. I've never understood why. I don't know how many people want to be on the phone while they're in the, to on the toilet. All right, and that's the tour. One of the big draws to this property is its pools, all seven of them, which cater to various needs. A kid-friendly pool sits at one corner, and in our time here found it almost abandoned, which might play into the fact that other amenities for kids are lacking here. The next pool is a long skinny shape, with plenty of chairs both close and removed from its waters. Multiple levels allow for a just getting one's feet wet or lying on the in-pool furniture to slightly deeper sections, but designed to maximize the edges where everyone tends to want to take up their position. From here, a few bridges down opens up to a more circular pool with more openness. Behind this section sits the reserve optional pool for Crockford's guests, so we did not spend any time here. Lastly, the infinity pool, and we saved the best for last. With its own separate bar area, this infinity pool overlooks the best views of the strip that this hotel has. We came to enjoy it first thing when it opened and pretty much had it to ourselves. But I imagine it gets pretty busy as it is prime real estate and the loungers costs certainly reflect this. But a dip first thing in the morning with your arms resting over the infinity edge, staring down at the other strip properties is a must do. It's hard not to love this place, be it a Hilton or Conrad room, never mind the added luxuries that come with Crockford suite. But it's so new that you'd be severely disappointed if you didn't love it. But time will tell whether this resort stays on top or not. But its location turns a lot of people off. Not me, however, as its location will only get better once that gargantuan resort across the road opens. So I'd definitely come back, but I'd probably drop down to the Base Hilton brand. Of course, unless either the Conrad or the Crockford's hotel rooms dropped in price to match. Mm -hmm.